Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to replace the thermal paste in the original Xbox. This is a good way to maintain the console and make sure that it'll last a long time. Uh, the original thermal compound that was used is not the greatest quality. And uh, it could be more than 15 years old now depending on when your Xbox was made. So now is definitely a good time to uh, change it out. As a disclaimer, I want to say I'm not a professional and I'm not responsible for what happens to your Xbox while attempting this procedure, so follow at your own risk. Uh, I don't want to scare anyone from trying this, but then again, you are opening up your own Xbox, and if you're not careful, you can break something. That being said, I should go over some basic facts for anyone that, I guess, might call themselves a tech illiterate or anything like that. So these two metal objects in front of you, uh, in the center of the motherboard, those are called uh, heat sinks, and they are tightly clamped over two computer chips, the CPU and the GPU. The smaller heat sink is for the GPU, and the larger heat sink is over the CPU. And these chips get extremely hot while the Xbox is running, so you never want to turn on the Xbox without the heat sinks installed, or else you will risk permanent damage. So I repeat, never ever turn it on without the heat sinks. Uh, so, the first thing we're going to do is take the clip off of the GPU using a small tool like a screwdriver and just undo the clip at the base right there and then the clip will come right off. The next step is to warm up the chips, uh, which I think is vital because in its current state, the heat sinks are probably way too stuck onto the board to remove by hand. So uh, what I'm going to do is plug in the power cord and nothing else and I'm going to run the console without the clip for the GPU and eventually it will get warm enough that you can remove it so you can see I turned it on and I get some error lights uh, blinking lights that's totally fine I just need the console to warm up a bit so I'm going to let it run and after a few minutes it will shut itself off automatically uh, then I'm going to turn it on maybe one or two more times and let it do the same thing. I'm going to run it a few minutes until it turns itself off. Once I feel that the heat sinks are uh, heating up a bit, I can finally remove them. Be careful when you plug it in not to touch any part of the power supply on the right side. Be very, very careful. Once it's done heating up, make sure to unplug it right away. Here I am taking off the GPU heatsink first. I was very pleased with uh, the way the thermal paste had come off, it was mostly stuck onto the heatsink. That will make things a lot easier to clean later, as most of it is not on the chip on you know that's on the board. For the CPU heatsink, you have to lift that black arm all the way up, and then use your tool to take off the rest of the clip. Be careful when you're taking off the clip and make sure you don't break something else uh, when your hand slips, like I just did. Uh, and keep track of the way the clip was set up because it only goes back in in that one direction. You can't flip it backwards and put it back on. So here are the two chips. We have to clean both of uh, the chips and the heat sinks, get rid of all the old thermal paste before we apply some new thermal paste. And to do that, I like to use Arctic Clean Thermal Material Remover. I found it on Amazon. It works way, way better than rubbing alcohol and I found that some Xboxes have used some god-awful paste from hell that just refused to budge no matter how much rubbing alcohol I poured onto it and nothing else is working but I highly recommend getting a separate thermal paste remover it just saves you so much trouble and it's so much faster so what I do I let it sit it says to let it sit for 30 seconds, but I let it sit closer to a minute, a minute and a half. I just coat the whole thing in the stuff and just put it down for over a minute is uh, probably a good good estimate. So I do that for both the heat sinks and then I put some onto the chips very, very carefully. I don't want it to drip everywhere. Uh, the bottle says that it's a mix of acetone and other chemicals. I I assume the other chemicals are just there to minimize the uh, abrasiveness of the acetone, but it works. So I use a q-tip here to 
start scrubbing away the old thermal paste. And after a minute, the uh, paste remover is really doing the trick here because it's coming off almost without a fight. Um, so once I clean this up a little bit, get it nice and shiny, I can move on to the others. In the meantime, here's some high-speed cleaning action. Okay, everything's clean now. I'm going to clean the surface of the heat sinks and the chips with uh, this other product uh, that's just meant to clean off any residue that might still be stuck on there to make sure that we'll get maximum coverage when we put on the new thermal paste. You can definitely use regular rubbing alcohol too. So I'm going to apply a little bit on each heat sink and on the chips. I'm going to wipe them away with a clean cloth that's uh, lint free just to make sure that nothing, no foreign objects will be inside when we put the heat sinks back on. This is a thermal paste I use right now, uh, Arctic MX4. It works very, very well. I get some low temperatures uh, on my Xboxes when I use this. Uh, pretty good product. I recommend any thermal paste that's semi-reputable. It really doesn't have to be high-end. This is a method I like to use. Uh, since the CPU is very, very small, I like to put just one little dab right in the middle. The idea is that once the heatsink is back on and the clip is like firmly pressing down on it, the thermal paste will spread evenly across the whole chip. Uh, creating a very very thin layer which is what we want if we want to maximize cooling. Uh, since the GPU is a lot larger you're going to have to use a little bit more thermal paste and I will, I'm always worried about proper coverage so for the larger chip I like to do the cross method. You could also use like a larger dab in the very middle same as the first one. I just like doing this just out of preference uh, it really, really doesn't matter what method you choose as long as there's a very good layer of paste going on. So once you just drag the tube slowly across an X pattern, and it seems like good, good enough amount. I don't really fret about proper amount of thermal paste. It's much more likely that you use too little and suffer a lot of overheating problems. Than put too much which in my experience has never ever been a detriment again that's just my experience and when you're putting the heat sinks back on uh, as a tip I like to place it on and then firmly hold it down for a few seconds just to make sure uh, it's spreading evenly right away and that kind of prevents some air bubbles from forming uh, underneath use a tool to help you put the clips back on and once you hear the click, uh, you're good. Do the same thing to the other one. Hold the heatsink down on it for a few seconds tightly. Then grab your clip and put it back on. You're putting it back on exactly the same way as you took it off. The only thing to remember now is that once you have the CPU heatsink and clip on, you have to push that black arm all the way down to secure it. And there you go. That's how to replace the thermal paste in the original Xbox. Thanks for watching.